one thing that was really weird about it, and this gets to the like closeted 15 year old brain, was that we were, you know, she and my brother had broken up. She thought it was really funny to flirt with me, his little brother, and decided she was going to take my virginity and invited him along to show me how to do it. And I watched him fuck so sloppy seconds every time I watched him fuck her. Um, and then I was fucking her, and I was pretending she was Andy Gibb or Lace Garrett just to take her. And it was difficult to pretend, and I was like worried that if I didn't actually finish, uh, if I couldn't do it, that then they would realize that I was gay and I would get beaten up. Um, I was really, really worried that I was going to get uh, gay bashed while my penis was in a woman. Which is not an experience any lot of gay men have ever had. Uh, you know, we walk around thinking, am I walking straight enough? And here I'm going, am I fucking her straight enough? And uh, I wouldn't touch him, and he was really sexy, and I wouldn't touch him, or really look at him, because I was afraid that if I looked at him, he would realize I was gay. He was staring at me, and then, you know, they were ready to get out of the tent in which we were fucking in August in Indiana. And so he reached between my legs and started to play with my balls to help me finish. It helped. <laughs> and I went away at 15 thought, well, he can do that because he knows he's straight. If I do it, he'll know I'm gay. And kill me for getting my gay balls all over his hair. <laughs> Tell me about your most painful sexual experience. Oh, not me tonight. Your most painful sexual experience. Uh, no. <laughs> My boyfriend and I want to try a threesome, how do we, nobody's monogamous. My boyfriend and I want to try a threesome, how do we go about that? Meeting, explaining, exploring, and avoiding weirdness after. Weirdness is so hardwired into sex. Weirdness is with sex before, after, during. If you want to avoid awkwardness and weirdness, chemical castration, <laughs> even in the climate market avoidance, they are eating carpets. <laughs> In my experience. My past experience with my white carpet watched. Um, you just have to power through the awkwardness. Acknowledge the awkwardness and power through it. Put out an ad. Put yourselves out there. I think the best way, but this is kind of a gay superpower, the best person to have a three-way with is an ex that you like and are still attracted to and are on good terms with and it won't be too weird and you're current. That's an awesome threesome where everybody feels safe and comfortable. If your current is not insecure about your ex, and if your current is insecure about your ex, get rid of the current and date the ex. <laughs> what is the best approach to spicing things up, increasing sex drive, with my recently sober husband who has completely lost his libido and doesn't seem to care? Well, how recent is the sobriety? Um, he might need a little more time. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people marry uh, while they're fucked up and then they sober up and realize that they have married the wrong person not to be the bearer of perhaps crushingly bad news. And I'm not saying that's definitely the case here. It may not even likely be the case here, but it has to be acknowledged. Um, you know, I know, I have two friends who were great together until he stopped abusing heroin, uh, which none of us really know he was abusing, and she stopped getting drunk all the time. And they both sobered up and looked at each other and went, yeah, no. <laughs> so it's a substance abuse to them together. I'm not saying that's the case here. I should shut up about this digression. Um, give him a little more time. Make sure that he knows that you love him and that you support him and you support him through this. Give his body chemically some time to adapt to its new reality and hopefully kick back into gear. Have him go to the doctor. Get his testosterone levels checked. What, was the, what were the drugs or the alcohol doing for him that his own body stopped doing for him, and his own body needs to start doing for him again. And take baby steps. Um, but there's only so long you should hang out. You have to decide for yourself how long you can be in a sexless relationship before you want to pass or you want to act. Um, and then the conversation that I think everybody should have before they get married about what happens if it ends and how we're going to treat each other on the way out if it ends. Hopefully you have that conversation. Hopefully it won't come to that. I can't figure out how to be a kinky mom I used to be way kinky before I had a child, but how? But now it just feels wrong, and I can't get past it. Um, my my husband um, 
How many of you follow him on Instagram? You've seen him in leather on Instagram. He didn't get into leather until after he was a dad. Uh, you can be a kinky parent. I'm married to one. Uh, so is my husband. <laughs> These are just separate roles and you need to compartmentalize them. You are struggling, perhaps yourself, with a little bit of Madonna whore complex. We usually talk about that with men doing that to women. Sometimes women do that to themselves. You know, a guy will happily get a really aggressive blowjob from his girlfriend, but as soon as the girlfriend is the mother of his children, he needs to get that blowjob from a sex worker instead. Because getting a blowjob like that from your wife would be wrong. No, because people are multifaceted, and you have this dimension as a mom, and this role as a mom that you have stepped into, uh, which is in some ways as much role play as whatever role play you were getting up to when you were kinky. You get to be different people at different times, uh, and in different circumstances, and you just have to throw yourself into it and try pot.